and welcome to another Wolf Time gaming video. Today I'm going to be painting up Count Dooku for Star Wars Legion. Absolutely fantastic looking miniature. Perfect leader for the Separatist forces. He's going to be great on the tabletop, leading the droids to battle. Before we get started on his painting though, as usual, let's get that kettle on. Okay, so the first thing you do once you've built your mini, of course, is to give it a really good base coat. Now you will notice there's a slight gap in uh, his on his jacket or between his cloak and his jacket. Um, what I did actually after taking this photo, so I didn't even notice him, I actually pulled, prized him apart and put him back together. And you'll notice that as I go through the video, it's actually that gap's disappeared now. You do really need to be careful of that sort of thing, especially with these Star Wars minis. I found that a lot recently. Uh, some of the, the molds don't quite fit together properly. You have to have a little bit of a play around with them. But yeah, give them a spray. I've used uh, Games Workshop's Grey Seer just to give it a good base coat. And then we'll move on to the next stage which in this instance is the face now to start the face I always start with the eyes I do find it's uh, good to get these out of the way when you've got no other paints on them all I'm doing here is I'm getting a little bit of black paint any black paint will do I've used Corvus black and I'm just basically drawing a line from just next to the nose to the edge of the eye and what this does is add sort of a, a natural shadow um, where the you know where your your eyes are essentially where the sunken into your head um, the next stage is to grab some white paint uh, any white will do I've used the games workshop white scar for this one and all I'm doing is exactly the same thing with the black I'm starting just next to the nose and I'm drawing out to the edge of the eye but I'm doing it within that black line I've just done so essentially what you're getting is a like a, a black outline around the white now to do this the other way around and do white and then try and do a black outline is absolutely well it's not impossible but I find it impossible um, just to finish off all you need to do is dot a little bit of black paint just where the um, iris is uh, whichever way you want your character to be looking now this is obviously really really fiddly I'm using an insane detail brush just to dot this uh, paint on there and all I'm doing is using the, the black the same black paint as we did the outline with and just dotting it just on the center of the eye there um, just so uh, it, it's not essentially just like white like some like a ghoul or a ghost or something like that you want it you want to actually have it black if you do struggle with that I would just go with a, a black paint um, straight off the bat and just leave it black and the next stage is, or the next stage I'm going to paint is the hair. Now, as you can see, we've obviously got in based uh, grey sear, and I'm using a contrast paint called Apothecary White to do the hair. Now, in the past, I've tried to use non oil with um, a white to, to give that sort of a grey look. But what I found with the Apothecary White, it gives that really nice, very light grey um colouring into the recesses and I think it's perfect for, for Dooku's hair and I think it'll look absolutely fantastic. Now the next stage is actually the flesh and I'm starting with uh, gullium and flesh, contrast gullium and flesh just to, to give the, the face a complete um, coating and also his, uh, his hands as well. What I've, I've also done is grabbed a little bit of fire slayer flesh um, just to, as I'll get towards the end of the painting of uh, the actual skin itself and, and just dotting it into the uh, sort of recesses or next to the nose in particular across his, his forehead there's a couple of you know wrinkles because he's obviously quite a, an old guy Count Dooku is um, and also just uh, around the edges of the mouth as well and what this fire slayer flesh does is just give it that little bit more definition um, on, on sort of the skin areas and I think it looks really effective and now we're going to start on the uh, clothing and I'm going to be doing the inside of the cloak first. I'll just grab some Mournfang Brown, which isn't a contrast paint. Um, it's just a normal Games Workshop paint. But I thought it was quite a nice uh, light brown to line the inside of his, his cloak. I noticed on some of the source material that you can find on the internet that it is brown, um, like a, a, a brown, lighter brown anyway, the cloak is, than the outside of it. The outside I found was quite dark. 
um, which we'll come on to in a little while. But I thought I'd do the inside first, which meant that when I do the actual body, I'm not going to get um, afterwards. I'm not going to get any of the brown paint onto the body, and it's uh, it's a great sort of looking colour for this, or at least I think it's a, a nice sort of light brown to start off with anyway. So the, then we're getting onto the actual body, the trousers, the boots, the jacket that he's wearing. I'm doing all of that with a black contrast black Templar. Now, I know you guys have seen me use this one in the in the past. It's a really, really good black paint. It's a, it's a great way to get some paint on your miniature, especially when it comes to black, without any highlighting needed. Now, of course, you can highlight if you want to. You can go over it and dot a little bit of grey just around the edges and around the edge of the jacket and things like that. But you don't necessarily need to because the contrast paint is designed in a way that it pulls away from all those raised areas and give you that sort of natural highlight with uh, without any sort of effort really. Now the next step is a, another contrast paint called Contrast Wildwood and that's a much darker brown and I'm going to be using that for the um, outside of the cloak and also his belt you can see that I quickly did the belt it took me uh, only a few minutes uh, which is another reason I love painting with this contrast paint because it takes no time at all now I'm just giving it a complete coat you know nice and thick which means it'll drop nicely into those recessed areas of the cloak leaving the raised areas really really nice and, and light giving you sort of that natural effect now I'm going to do his sabre now just so to get it out of the way because I don't really want to, to miss this, that and I'm all I'm going to do or all I'm doing here is grabbing a little bit of lead belcher paint uh, which is a silvery coloured paint and just painting the actual sabre itself um, just wanted to do that before I did sort of the, the blade uh, which was the, the lit area I wanted to get that you know the sabre out of the way to start with um, the next stage or the next bit we're going to be coming on to as I've just alluded to was the actual blade itself, the saber, uh, and all I've done is grabbed uh, another contrast paint. In this instance, it's uh, Blood Angels Red. I'm just coating the whole thing with Blood Angels Red. Now I found this is quite a nice red to get to um, pop onto the um, the actual blade. I know contrast paints are designed to drop into recesses and things like that, so you get the effect, you know, and and you don't necessarily um, need a contrast paint on the, on the blade but I had it on the table it's a great sort of mid range, mid colored like uh, red and it's perfect or at least I think it's perfect for the actual blade itself now because I used a normal paint for the inside of the cloak I did want to add a little bit of shading to it so I grabbed some of the older Agrax earth shade which is a, a shade paint essentially uh, and just coated the whole of the inside of the jacket what this did was add all the um, all the like sort of folds in the cloak and the inside of the cloak. It added that little bit of definition by darkening it down slightly, and I concentrated on those folds as well. I also did the outside of the cloak at this stage just so I could it would all sort of blend together because uh, I always find that when using the shades that it blends really nicely. I also grabbed the other Games Workshop shade called Nuln Oil. And I just dropped that onto the saber as well, just to add a little bit of definition to the saber. It was very bright when you just use a uh, silver sort of colour on its own. And also the chain, just holding the cloak on as well. I grabbed a little bit of null and just did that area as well. Uh, just so it darkens it down and makes it look a little bit more realistic. Now, basing wise, I just painted the whole base uh, with Corvus Black initially. Because if you've watched any of my other videos... Uh, when we've used the um, texture paints in the past, or the technical paints, the Martian Iron Earth, uh, what it does is crack really, really nicely and looks great. But if you don't have a sort of a, a, an under colour to it, you can sort of see the white and that stick through and it looks a bit terrible. Uh, but you can see here, I just throw it on really, really thick. Don't try and spread this out. It doesn't work if you spread it out. You need to put it onto the base really, really thick, almost like big globules. Um, and you just coat the, the whole base there. And what it do, you just leave it to dry. And what it does as it dries, it pulls apart and cracks and looks almost like a, a, a desert, like a Martian dried up desert area. And looks really, really effective. Once you've let that dry, as you can see, your model's now complete. Now, some of the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice there's a slight glow on his uh, trousers and his jacket. All I did here was grab a little bit of red paint and I dry brushed it over. If you haven't done dry brushing before, you just get that little bit of paint, wipe the majority off on a piece of tissue, uh, wipe it over any of the areas you want it to capture, and it just 
essentially he just catches the, the raised areas and looks like the lightsaber's glowing you can see it on his jacket and I think that looked quite cool but I'm really pleased with the mini I think it's going to look absolutely fantastic on the on the tabletop um, I wouldn't have picked him up straight away but you know what he needed to get on that table and I think he looks great thanks for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos go and check out the channel now for more great content there's loads of painting videos including games workshop star wars and loads of fantasy settings such as frostgrave and one of my favorites boris and badgers otherwise i'll see you in the next one